Also, Northern Colorado's Savannah Scott will join us coming up in segment number two. And Coulter New Arnes from Skyline Sports will chat all things Big Ten men's basketball coming up in segment three. Weaver stayed off to a 2-0 start in conference play, and Jeremy Sindel had a big part of that, averaging 28 points in wins at Montana State and at Montana. Against Montana State, Jeremy, eight three-pointers. Take us through that win against Montana State. That's a crazy stat. Uh, yeah, uh, I got to give all the credit to my teammates for that. I mean, setting me up with the great things they did and the coaching staff with the uh, friends. And, I mean, I just got hot and just kept it going. You know, three consecutive Big Sky Player of the Week awards. Uh, obviously, this team's rolling. Um, and, and it sounds like your team guy, you want to put the team first. But these individual honors are always nice to get. But again, like you said, that's a byproduct of your team playing at a high level. Yeah, I mean, you can't get those awards if you're not winning, you know. So, uh, yeah, credit to the teammates for, uh, you know, giving us those wins because it's not just me, you know, doing all of that. So it's, it's been through uh, the coaching staff and everything. But, yeah, it's an honor. And, uh, I look at that and I'm, I'm grateful for all that, those awards. All right, so you had the big stat night against Montana State. And then against Montana, in overtime, you scored the game winner uh, with about .6 seconds left. Uh, talk about that play. Was that a set play for you or how did that come about? Uh, well, it was a set play for me. I mean, in practice, we always practice a lot of late game situations, but that was one of them. Uh, and yeah, it was uh, Coach Ray drew up a great play for me, and uh, it, the shot went down. You know, I've known Randy Ray for 15, 16 years, one of the good guys in college basketball. What's it like playing for him? I mean, it's great. I mean, he makes you uh, put you on edge every day because he's on edge every day. I mean, he has a lot of passion for the game. You can tell it and just the way he coaches. And he brings it every day, so that makes you want to bring it every day. So he's a, he's a great coach. And it's, I love playing for him. You know, I know you wouldn't mind me saying this, but I think everybody on that team is probably at least a foot taller than he is. Uh, however, yeah. however, not the guy you don't want to get on his bad side because he can, he can dice you up pretty good, can he? Yeah, it doesn't matter about his height. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> his, his voice, his passion. Yeah, everybody has respect for him, no matter what. Uh, being a senior on this team, do you enjoy maybe a larger leadership role? Is that something you've embraced? Yeah, I mean, I have to kind of embrace it at a younger age uh, because we had a lot of seniors when I was a sophomore. You know, I'm you know, trying to get that role in, you know, since then. But uh, with more time and you know, more time on my hands, I'm just getting more used to it. And, and I take China, you know, take the uh, role of being a leader. But we have a lot of other leaders on the team. Kendall Hill, you know, Rashad Gooden, he's doing a great job. He's really hurt. Uh, on the bench, Zach Braxton. So we have a lot of other good leaders as well. Joe Ballboy graduated uh, after last season, now playing for the Utah Jazz. We record this down here in Salt Lake City, so we get to see him uh, both with the Jazz and the Stars. Uh, did you, uh, you feel like you get a little bit more attention from the defense this season after he left? And uh, has that been the case this year? Uh, yeah, I knew after, you know, Joe's a great player, so they, you know, keyed in on him a lot. And I knew one thing he was on, they were going to start keying on me more. But yeah, I've seen it uh, in a lot of games, you know, uh, especially on ball screens and coming off screens for uh, shooting and stuff. So yeah, I've seen a lot of keyed in defenses, but I'm not really worried about all that. I mean, like I said, my teammates did a great job of still getting me open and the coaching staff still a great play. So, you know, that's, that's the good thing about that. You uh, you welcome Idaho State to the D event center. Obviously, Ethan Telfair, tremendous player. What kind of challenge does he pose, and what do you try to do defensively to limit him? Um, I mean, we just got to do our principles. I mean, every day we play, uh, I mean, every team we play has a, a you know, pretty good player. And, uh, you know, as long as we do our, you know, what Weaver State does defensively, I mean, we should be able, we should be good. All right, Jeremy, I want you to uh, try to pretend like you're Randy Ray here for a moment. Uh, give us some coach speak. What does Weaver State need to do this season to make sure, and what do you need to improve on this year to make sure that uh, you bring home another Big Sky championship? Uh, just keep working on, you know, defense. You know, defense is the main thing. Offense will come. Uh, stay together as a team and be the toughest, you know, final team in the Big Sky. Mm, I like it. Jeremy, we appreciate your time. Thanks for joining us. Yes, I appreciate it. That's uh, Weaver State Jeremy Sengler here on this week in Big Sky Basketball. He shared this week's Big Sky Conference Men's Basketball Weekly Honors with Randy Anawusar from Southern Utah. He's a junior from Eaglewood, California. Plus, a double-double in Southern Utah's victory over Northern Arizona by the score of, the score of 93-8. to Let's take a look at some scores from the opening weekend of Big Sky Conference play. Weaver State, as we mentioned, 2-0. 
Kansas after defeating Montana State 87 75 and Montana 84 81. Impressive to pick up two wins on the road in what is never an easy road trip to make to go to uh, Montana and Montana State. Northern Colorado also started 2 0 with wins over Portland State and Sacramento State. Eastern Washington defeating Idaho. Final score there 69 to 62. Southern Utah topped a rival Northern Arizona final score there, 93 to 80. And Montana, Montana, Montana State each picked up wins over Idaho State, while North Dakota split the West Coast road swing with a loss to Portland State and a win at Sacramento State. Coming up next, we'll be joined by Northern Colorado Savannah Scott after the break. You're listening to another edition of This Week in the Big Sky Basketball. <laughs> The Road to Reno is here. March 6, 2017, the Big Sky Conference will descend upon Reno, Nevada for the 2017 Big Sky Men's and Women's Basketball Championships. Go to RoadToReno.com to book tickets and accommodations for Big Sky Men's and Women's Basketball. Be a part of the thrill of Big Sky Men's and Women's Basketball and join the Road to Reno. Was such a high caliber player. She's like so much to my team, and 
it's a really awesome thing because she always wants to bring out the best in you. Um, and as far as, like, as a coach, she's just, she's amazing. She's, like, you can never have an off day with her. And then off the court, she's just so fun. Like, people wouldn't expect it, but, like, she loves, like, dogs. And <laughs> so that's, like, really fun because she always brings her dogs to practice. And it's just, like, with her as a coach, like, it's such a family atmosphere. So let's get to know you a little bit. What was uh, what came into your decision to go to Northern Colorado to uh, to play basketball? What was that like? Um, well, I really wanted to get out of California for a little bit. Um, so I, I thought Colorado really appealed to me. And then just like going on the visit, I could just tell the girls were so close, and it was such like a family kind of team. And so that really uh, brought my attention. What are you studying at, uh, at there in Northern Colorado, and what do you do, want to do once uh, the playing career is done? Um, well, I'm studying in nutrition, so that's my major, and then I'm minoring in recreation, tourism, and hospitality. Um, I'm not really sure what I want to do after, but I guess I still have a little time to figure it out. you got plenty of time to figure it out, Savannah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you're averaging 14.3 points a game, six rebounds. Uh, but again, you head out on the road. you got Southern Utah and Northern Arizona this weekend. So uh, put your coaching hat on. What do you and your teammates need to do to make sure that you uh, you uh, get those wins this weekend? Um, we just need to – we need to stop – Southern Utah in transition, that's what we've been focusing on, and then just keep in on our defense, a lot of ball pressure, and then limit our turnovers, but mainly just focus on us and put the ball in the basket. I like it. Savannah, thanks so much for your time. We appreciate it. We hope, uh, hope to be able to catch up with you again soon. Yes, thank you. You got it. Northern Colorado guard Savannah Scott here on this week in Big Sky Basketball. Big short break. Come back with the upcoming schedules for this weekend. We'll also chat with Skyline Sports Culture Nuanas. It's all coming up, the final segment of the first edition of this week in the Big Sky Basketball. The Road to Reno is here. March 6, 2017, the Big Sky Conference will descend upon Reno, Nevada for the 2017 Big Sky Men's and Women's Basketball Championships. Go to RoadToReno.com to book tickets and accommodations for Big Sky Men's and Women's Basketball. Be a part of the thrill of Big Sky Men's and Women's Basketball and join the Road to Reno. Really got been around a long time growing up in Montana. I really had a lot of love for the league. So 
And we're just trying to do something a little bit new, but it's been really fun. That's awesome. That's great. And if people want to follow you on social media, where, where can they find you? Uh, we're on Twitter at Skyline Sports MT. Uh, you can also just go directly to our website. That's at Skyline Sports MT dot com. That's MT dot com. And uh, either one of those ways, you can get all our content right there. All right, so let's uh, let's look at this big sky men's basketball race. Obviously, very very early in all of this, but is there anything that has surprised you so far in the early stages of this season? Well, I think that uh, when you have the two, in my eyes, front runners go at it in Missoula right away, I think that's going to be big, just because I, I don't know how many losses either Weber State or Montana has on the docket this year. So for Weber to take a one game lead two games into the conference schedule, I think that's huge. I also think that Weaver State proving that they could win in Missoula, that's huge as well. I talked to Randy Ray after the Montana State game, and uh, we were kind of joking a little bit. You know, I said, hey, one last question for you. I'd like to ask you about uh, playing in Missoula. And he's like, do we really have to? <laughs> you know, that's kind of been, you know, that's kind of been his Achilles heel. I think he's only won in Missoula one time before Saturday, and then he hadn't won there since 2009. So, um, I know losing in Missoula has cost him multiple NCAA tournament bids, all that sort of thing. And so to go into Missoula, get a win in overtime on such a spectacular shot by Jeremy Sanguin against a really good Montana team, that's huge. Uh, I also thought the probably other surprise of the weekend was Portland State was stopping or had you killing North Dakota in that first game, but then North Dakota being able to bounce back at Sac. That was a huge response by North Dakota, but also a huge win by Portland State. You also wonder, though, Portland State have a letdown against Northern Colorado two nights later. So, uh, like you said, it's a long Big Sky Conference season. It's going to be fun to see how it all plays out. But they're pretty competitive. I think Montana, Weber State, those two are probably the front runners already. And so that Weber State win, that could prove to be big down the road. Good to you on us from Skyline Sports joining us here on this weekend, Big Sky Basketball. We talked to Jeremy Sanguin in the first segment. You talked about that big shot again in overtime. Uh, this kid's already uh, nailed down three Big Sky Player of the Week honors. There's been a lot of great players that have rolled through this conference, uh, but uh, a lot of people are scratching their heads trying to remember uh, somebody that's won these many honors this early in a season, and people are having a kind of hard time coming up with some names. Just how special could this player be this year in Big Sky play? We were talking about this at the Montana State game because Jim Sullivan has been a tremendous shooter his entire career at Weber State. But he came into Montana State on Thursday, a game that I was at live, and he hits a three in transition on the very first possession. He hits a three off the dribble on the very second possession. Three possessions later, he comes off a screen and hits a 25-foot fadeaway with a hand in his face. And you could see it in his eyes as he ran down the court showing the three sign. He knew he was on fire. He proceeds to hit four more in the next five minutes. I've never seen a player hit seven consecutive threes in one half. I mean, there's been some great shooters in this league. I remember watching Tyler Harvey at the uh, the Big Sky Tournament in Missoula a couple years back in a shootout in the semifinals to go to the championship game. He hit something like six or seven out of ten, but never seen a guy hit seven in a row in one singular half. So, um, I mean, as far as how special this guy could be, um, I've covered Rodney Stuckey. I've covered Damian Lillard. I think Samuel's a better shooter than both of those guys. Mm. And his ability to get his shot in a multitude of ways. He can shoot off the dribble. He can come off screens and hit shots. He has range. Uh, I mean, the guy, you can tell he's put in hours and hours and hours in the gym because like that shot he hit in Missoula, that's, that's pure just practice right there. I mean, that's an incredibly tough shot. Michael Ogina could not have defended that thing any better. And he drills it right in his face. So I think it's the sky's the limit for this kid. I honestly think he's an NBA caliber player. Um, I don't know if he'll necessarily translate to the NBA as well as a Damian Lillard did, but I think he's actually probably a better shooter than Damian Lillard. So I think as far as the rest of the season goes, if he can stay hot like he is, I think he's probably the front runner for MVP in this league. Preseason all-conference team was made up entirely of guards, but in hindsight, do you think that there may have been a player who deserves some preseason recognition who didn't get it, especially considering how they started the year? Well, I, you know, I honestly think that Jordan Davis at Northern Colorado has a really good chance to be an all-league guy. I think that the way that Jeff Linder is using him in his first year as the head coach there at Northern Colorado is going to be really, really conducive to Jordan Davis' skills. When I first talked to Linder, he said that we want to use him like the Oklahoma City Thunder used Russell Westbrook. And I, I kind of laughed in my head. I said, okay, a true sophomore of the mid-major conference, uh, that seems like a bit of hyperbole. But then after watching some of their game film and watching some of their games back, he is using them like Russell Westbrook. Jordan Davis was coming downhill, 
ask people he's doing a good job of getting to the line, and he's also doing a good job facilitating. So I think he's a really special player uh, that'll, that'll be right there for all conference stuff at the end of the year. But I also think Bogdan Blizniak from Eastern Washington, the fact that they lose a ball-dominant guy like Austin McBroom, but then they transition to having Bogdan playing the point forward, and he, he showed an ability to score by out almost 20 points per game. But he's also shown a tremendous ability to facilitate. I think he's third or fourth in the league in assists as well. So I think that uh, he'll, be, he'll be a guy that's right there at the end, too, just because with him being able to play the point and also fit into the isolation motion style that they like to play, that makes them incredibly tough to guard. Because then you also add in Julian Harrell, who could be kind of a point forward. And you also add in Jake Wiley, who should be one of the most athletic post players in this league. And all of a sudden, they're one of the most unique matchups in the league. So I think both those guys will be right there along with those six players that were on the All Big Sky team in the preseason. Also, you've got some great stuff up there on Big Sky Conference Men's Basketball at SkylineSportsMT.com. I'm looking right, right? SkylineSportsMT.com. Uh, but what are some of the things you're what are some of the things you're working on that fans can look forward to coming up here soon? Well, there's a lot of stuff that's uh, still real fresh right now. So we did preview capsules on all 12 of the Big Sky men's teams. We also are working on a series of stories about some of the trends in the league. One of those was about the challenges of non-conference scheduling. So that was a pretty interesting one. I worked on that one for about three months. As far as all the reporting you guys throw into there. Uh, we also have profiles on Jeremy Sangler and then Quentin Hooker from North Dakota, who was the, uh, the preseason MVP. We'll follow that up with profiles on all the other four guys that were on the preseason all league team. So Victor Sanders from Idaho, Tyler Hall from Montana State, Walter Wright from Montana. Uh, and so we'll, we'll, and then we'll also have a story on just some of the trends as far as uh, last year there were some premier big men in the league, guys like Martin Burney, Joe Ballaboy, Nathan Joyce, those guys aren't there anymore. So I'll, I'll have a story actually tomorrow about just how that changes the landscape of the league too. It has become even more guard oriented than already before. And then we'll also have coverage on uh, both the Montana schools this weekend as far as live coverage and then all, also our Big Sky Roundup too. So we'll have a ton of stuff for everybody that's interested in Big Sky Conference and basketball. Love it. Culture, you're the man. We appreciate it. We look forward to catching up with you soon. Okay, thanks so much for having me, Scott. You got it. That's uh, Coulter Nuanez here on this week in Big Sky Basketball. From Skyline Sports, you can visit SkylineSportsMT.com or follow them on Twitter at SkylineSportsMT. Right, that wraps it up. First show in the books for this week in Big Sky Basketball. Go to the website, GoGarino.com. Put your tickets 